What's up, everyone? My name is Manvith. I'm Sanjit. And I'm Bonnie. And, and today, today we're doing the anti matter, antimatter, and dark matter energy. This will be our second video in our first unit in the Astronomy 101 course. So let's get started. So what is the universe exactly made up of? Well, it's made of 4.6% matter, which is in the purple color on the graph. It's made of 0% antimatter. The reason why is because antimatter in it, um, instantly annihilates uh, matter. And so no antimatter would exist. And there's 66.2% of dark energy and 29.2% of dark matter. So what does this really mean? This really means that we really have no idea what uh, um, what we're deal really dealing with in the universe. Because if only around 5% of the universe is made out of matter, and that's everything we can see, and we really have no idea what dark energy or dark matter is. Those are just names. So it's going to be really cool to see, find out what those are really are. Out of all the 4% of matter, 98% uh, of that matter is going to be hydrogen and helium. This is because most of the stars uh, are mostly made up of these elements. And some uh, some other matter are 2%, like heavy elements and neutrinos. Antimatter. So antimatter is a concept in particle physics that re refers to particles that have the same mass as the corresponding particles in ordinary matter, but possess opposite electric charge and other quantum numbers. In other words, antimatter is composed of antiparticles. Each particle of, in ordinary matter has a corresponding antiparticle in antimatter. For example, the antiparticle of an electron, a, neg a negatively charged subatomic particle, is a positron, which has the same mass as an electron, but carries a positive charge. Similarly, the antiparticle of a proton, a positively charged subatomic particle, is called an antiproton, which has the same mass as a proton, but carries a negative charge. When a particle and its corresponding antiparticle come into contact, they annihilate each other, release, releasing tremendous amount of energy in the process. This, this annihilation uh, is a result of the particles and antiparticles colliding and converting their mass and energy, uh, according to Einstein's famous E equals mc squared equation. These particles and antiparticles pop in and out of existence due to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Since there should be no matter randomly created by these particle-antiparticle pairs, they have to equal zero. That's why they pop in and out of existence. Antimatter has been studied in particle accelerators and is used in some medical and scientific applications. However, it is challenging to produce, store, and control antimatter due to its ten tendency to quickly annihilate when it comes in contact with ordinary matter. Scientists continue uh, to investigate antimatter to better understand the fundamental nature of particles and their interactions. This also means that antimatter does not make up part of the constitution of the universe because it annihilates any ordinary matter. And it also is responsible for the death of black holes, which we will go in later videos. Antimatter and matter also, the particles of those also have the same spin. So now Bonnie will be talking about dark matter. So what is dark matter? Because it makes up 30% of the universe, but we can't detect it, which is why its name is dark matter. So, we can't detect it in normal ways, but there is a theory that says it might be made of supersymmetric particles, which are partners, particles that we already know. One way of theorize to detect this matter is that if it exists, is through gravitational waves. People have also theorized that dark matter particles could be created at the Large Hadron Collider, or oh, uh, LHC for short, but the particles would escape undetected, so it would be really hard to detect them. It would also carry energy and momentum, which is a way we could measure them. If this matter is proven to exist, it could help us understand how galaxies and bigger structures like galaxy um, clusters and even bigger structures like that, if like we can know how they hold together better. Um. There's another theory. Uh, there's another theory that suggests that a certain type of matter, baryonic, could still make up dark matter if it is inside smaller stars, like brown dwarf stars, and in small chunks of heavy elements, 
These phenomena are known as massive contact halo objects, not sharply shorter. And another theory is that it's made of much more exotic matter, such as axions or weakly interacting massive particles, WIMPs. Axions are also theorized to have weird properties, like super weird, including the idea that they could turn into photons and turn back into axions. This is one theory that could show how and why they cannot detect matter. Dark matter, I mean. Fritz Wichy and Rare Rubin discovered dark matter, and when they observed it, that all the matter in the universe didn't have enough gravity hold, to hold anything together, and everything should just fly up into space in random directions. And that's how dark matter came into existence. So, now let's talk about dark energy. So, what is dark energy exactly? Well, for centuries, we believed that our galaxy was the universe. We didn't appreciate that um, there could be way more. This was until Edwin Hubble discovered that there were other galaxies outside of the Milky Way. This, um, his observations that there were more galaxies uh, spurred a new revolution in physics. There were many people who observed something strange. Our galaxy seemed to be more, uh, moving further apart from other galaxies in the universe. Other galaxies, except for some like the Andromeda galaxy. But this was because these galaxies were gravitationally bound, like in um, group, galaxy groups or galaxy clusters. Uh, people didn't know why we were moving further, uh, uh, further away from other galaxies. So they called this mysterious force dark energy. After decades... Uh, of research, we found that uh, from the moment the universe is born till this uh, foreseeable future is driven by the dark energy because this stretches the space-time fabric that holds everything together. The observable universe is 46.508 billion light years in radius. You might ask why there is an observable universe. I mean, should we be able to see the, uh, the whole universe because nothing is faster than the speed of light? Well, the reason for this is because of dark energy. This mysterious force causes the universe to expand at a rate faster than the speed of light. Now, you probably learned that nothing is faster than the speed of light, but that only applies to objects' um, velocities, not the expansion of the universe. Dark energy was discovered in 1998 by, an Amer by American astronomers Adam Rees, the author of this article, and Saul uh, Palmiter, the Australian astronomer, and uh, Brian Smith, using eight telescopes from the Keck Observatory and the MMT Observatory, they looked at a type of uh, looked at a type one A supernova that happened when the universe was two thirds of its present size, and saw that the luminosity of super of the supernova was fainter compared to a universe without dark energy. One theory for what dark energy is that it is a property of space itself. And so as more space is created, there is more dark energy causing the universe to expand faster and faster. Another theory is that dark energy comes from the quantum theory of matter, where empty space is made out of made of visual particles that continually form and disappear, which would give off enough energy to be the force that is dark energy. Another widely discussed theory that could be the expl explanation for dark energy is that space is filled with a dynamic energy fluid or field that has the opposite effect of all the matter in the universe, which, which drives the expansion of the universe. Okay, Every, thanks for uh, watching the video, everyone. We hope you liked it. Uh, uh, in, next, in the next video, we'll be talking about the cosmic microwave background radiation and the, the structure of the universe. Which is really fun. So come back yeah. to next time.